and welcome to Hannah Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about a very interesting topic and that is tetanus. So let's get started. So what is tetanus? Tetanus is a serious infection which is caused by a bacteria called Clostridium tetani. When this bacteria invades the body, it produces a poisonous toxin that causes painful muscle contractions. Another name for the tetanus infection is lockjaw or trismus, and this is because the tetanus infection causes a person's neck and jaw muscles to lock, making it really hard for them to open their mouth or to swallow. The tetanus infection can be life-threatening without treatment, and it is said that approximately 10 to 20% of tetanus infections are fatal. So from this definition of tetanus, we get that it's actually an infection which is called by a specific type of bacteria called Clostridium tetani. And this is actually what these bacteria look like microscopically. So something very interesting about this bacteria is that when it invades the body, it releases this poisonous toxin that affects the central nervous system quite severely, causing painful muscle contractions in these patients, specifically in the neck and jaw region. And this is why it's also given the name locked jaw or trismus. So this is what the typical aspect of a patient looks like who has trismus, locked jaw or tetanus. And it says the spasm of the jaw, facial and neck muscles is pictured here. And this is actually given the Latin name rissus sardonicus. And these patients will often suffer from dysphagia and may even have difficulties in breathing because of all the tensity within these various muscle groups in this neck region. So another key sign of this disease is something called opisthotonus, which describes what this patient here looks like. And this is actually a complete tetanic spasm in advanced disease. And the patient will be in rigid or moderate opisthotonus with the arms extended, abdomen board-like, so really rigid and board-like, and respiratory arrest may actually occur. And this is that 10 to 20% of cases which can actually be fatal. So now that we know what the basics of tetanus is, let's take a close look at how one can contract this disease. So tetanus is caused by a toxin which is made by spores of the bacteria Clostridium tetani, which is actually found in soil, dust and animal feces. Tetanus is also often associated with rust, especially rusty nails. And I remember playing outside as a child, if there was a broken down car that was rusting away or any nails in a piece of wood or board or a fence that was exposed, my grandmother would always warn me, oh, you're going to get tetanus if you go near there. So although the rust itself does not cause tetanus, the objects that accumulate rust are often found outdoors or in places that harbor anaerobic bacteria, such as Clostridium tetani. So a person can become infected when these spores enter the bloodstream through a cut or a deep wound. So usually there is a site of puncture, so usually a sharp object, or even if someone falls in dust or soil, or even animal feces or animal droppings that are found in the soil that is contaminated with the Clostridium tetani bacteria, then they can contract the disease in this way. So the bacterial spores then spread into the central nervous system and produce a toxin which is called tetanospasmin. And this toxin is a poison that blocks the nerve signals from your spinal cord to your muscles. And this can lead to repetitive and severe muscle spasms or muscle contractions. So this is why these patients suffer from that locked jaw or opisthotonus where their muscles become so rigid and board-like. So moving on, let's explore some signs and symptoms of this disease. So the most common initial sign is spasms of the muscles of the jaw or locked jaw. And other signs and symptoms of tetanus include jaw cramping, sudden involuntary muscle tightening, which means muscle spasms, often in the stomach. So these patients are often described to have a rigid or board-like stomach. They will also have painful muscle stiffness all over their body, a trouble swallowing, jerking or staring seizures, headaches, fever and sweating, and changes in their blood pressure and changes in their heart rate, which usually both increase. So these patients will have that fever, the high blood pressure, the muscle spasms, the locked jaw, 
sweating, difficulty in swallowing, and complete muscle spasms throughout their body. The diagnosis of tetanus. So medical professionals can diagnose tetanus by examining the patient and looking for certain signs and symptoms, such as a locked jaw, sudden involuntary muscle tightening, seizures, a headache, fever, and sweating. So the diagnosis is usually a clinical one based on the typical aspect of the patient. So these patients will have the spasms of the jaw and they will have this distinct facial appearance, like a shocked appearance because their jaws are actually locked. They will also have dysphagia because of this locked jaw. They can have complete tetanic spasms in their entire body. So they usually have this very specific aspect with their arms outstretched and this curvature in their body. And in these cases, this is where respiratory arrest may actually occur because the abdomen becomes bored like the muscles within the chest area actually begin to tighten and respiratory arrest may actually occur at this point. So this is how the actual infection leads to all of this. So as we said, we have this Clostridium titani, which are gram positive spore bearing rods and they actually enter the patient's body through a puncture or wound site. And this is usually from contaminated animal feces, soil, dust, or even rusty objects such as nails. And this wound site or puncture site is actually a very good thriving spot for anaerobic bacteria. So this is why these bacteria actually thrive here so well. So then we have that toxin which is produced locally in this site and passes into the bloodstream along to the nerves of the central nervous system. And then we have the motor neurons of the spinal cord and brainstem, which become hyperactive because the toxin specifically attacks the inhibitory cells. And this actually causes that severe spasms throughout all these muscles in the body. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of tetanus. So tetanus is a medical emergency and requires prompt care in the hospital. The immediate treatment is done with a medicine called human tetanus immune globulin or TIG and this actually neutralizes the toxins which are already released by these Clostridium titani bacteria. Aggressive wound care is also essential so the deep cleaning of that wound or even debridement. We can also administer these patients drugs to control their muscle spasms such as diazepam which can be given orally or intravenously. Antibiotics such as metronidazole, which can be given IV for 10 days because this is actually a bacterial infection. We want to clear out the bacteria from the system. The patients will also be administered a tetanus vaccination. And depending on how serious the infection is, a tracheotomy or mechanical ventilation may actually be required to help these patients breathe. So as we said, in 10 to 20% of cases, the disease is actually fatal and usually occurs because of the onset of dyspnea. And in these cases, these patients will need mechanical ventilation or tracheotomy. The prevention of tetanus. So several vaccines are actually available and can help protect one against tetanus, all of which also protect against other diseases. So they're usually combi vaccines, which mean a combination of different agents which work to protect you against various diseases. So the first one is the DTAP or DTAP, and this protects the patient against diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, which is called the whooping cough. And the DTAP vaccine is usually given for younger children at two, four, and six months, and then again at 15 through eight months, and at four to six years. We then have the DT vaccine, which protects the patients against diphtheria and tetanus. And this vaccine is usually given to adults and can be given every 10 years. We then have the Tdap or TDAP vaccine, and this protects against tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis as well. So these are usually given in preteens, which are usually around the age of 11 or 12. And then we also have the TD vaccine, which protects against tetanus and diphtheria, and that is also given every 10 years, usually in adults. And that brings us to the end of this video on tetanus. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.